Your friends in Christ grace you in peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May it be unto you for now and forever. Amen. So, how would you like to be A.J. Brzezinski today? Personally, not so much me. Cubs fans have great remembrances of him. But, but he is a great baseball player. And, and he's been in Major League Baseball for 17 years. Has a 282 lifetime batting average. And a week or so ago, the Red Sox said, hmm, not so much, and let him go. However, despite his age, despite all the ups and downs of life, despite, despite it all, he was picked special. The Cardinals said, you are exactly the player we need. And so, he's donned a Cardinal uniform now. Cubs will see him one more time. But how would you like to be picked out like that? He is the last guy, I bet, the last person in all of baseball who ever thought I'd be a Cardinal. But he was picked special. Like you and me, special. You see, it, it, it's hard for us sometimes to, to think about things the way God thinks about them, and hard for us to imagine God's view of us. There, there's precious moments when that happens, when we, of all people, can get it. It's as God uses us in extraordinary ways to, to make his message known. Not that what we're doing is extraordinary. We're just living our lives, but he shines through us. As, as the prayers of God's people, for all people, are brought before the throne of grace, he shines through us. As love and care and compassion, as caring for the poor, the sick, those in prison, as it comes through us, he shines through us. As we share the gift of faith from generation to generation, he shines through us. Little Lucas was in my arms, barely an hour old, and he heard two songs. First of all, he heard, Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, because I wanted to impress on him the power of God in his life. I wanted from the first moment to inculcate him to life eternal. I also sang Go Cubs Go, but, but, that, but that was a little bit later on. The powerful one was, was the message of Jesus coming to him. And that's the powerful thing that comes to each one of us. Picked and chosen special. Elise is going to be baptized here in, in a, about an hour. Picked and chosen special. Not because she's got anything special going for her, although she has a pouch. That's something special. But not because of that, but because God loves her and wants her and desires her and will empower her just like he will empower her you. See, we think things are going along kind of normal, and, and maybe we're feeling like AJ, like I'm at the end of my career. I mean, I, I had a good run, 17 years as a major league ball player is pretty good, but God's got different plans. Remember how he used, remember how he used Moses, murdering Moses, shepherd Moses, and he said, you are going to be the one that I pick to deliver my people, Israel, from the most powerful man on earth, the Pharaoh of Egypt. Hmm. Mumbling Moses. He had to have Aaron speak for him because I think he stuttered. I think of a guy like Gideon 
Remember his story? He's in the threshing floor when God comes to him. Now the threshing floor, what he's doing is he's winnowing his, 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 his wheat. And so he's throwing it up in the air and letting the chaff blow off. It wasn't working too well for him because what he said was he was below ground. He was in like a, a gully or something doing that because he didn't want the enemy to see him. He was so afraid of losing what little he had that he hid. And here the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, Mighty warrior of God! And in parlance of the more modern era, not the most modern, but the more modern era, what you talking about, right? Who are you talking to? Mighty warrior of God. Then I think of how he used David, the little boy, shepherd boy with a, with a rock and a sling to do his mighty work. I keep on thinking about how God has used person after person and empowered them. Think about the message of eternal salvation, the message coming to a little 14-year-old girl in, in Nazareth who heard those strange words, you, Mary, you're, you're, you are going to be the mother of the Savior of the world. You see, what God does is he picks each one of us in, in our humanness, in our powerlessness, and he makes us his own. He empowers us. Did you hear it in our epistle lesson? Tom read it so well today. And we know that in all things God works for good to those who loved him. And here's the key for this week who have been called according to his purpose. This is Romans chapter 8. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. And therefore, we say, what should we say in response to this? If God's for us, who can be against us? Now, those are all big words about predestination and called, but let me, let me make them simple for you. Before the foundation of the world, God knew you and loved you. Before you were a glimmer in your parents' eyes, God knew you and loved you, and he planned you for this time, this moment, you are picked special. And you're not picked special to be in an entourage. An entourage in a sense that, that like all these hangers on, like, the really important person goes along and the rest of us kind of hang around. We're in because we're, we're his peeps. Friends, we are picked and chosen special with the gifts God has given us. And we're called, connected together by that calling, connected together by his choice. He chose Israel from among all the nations because they were the least. And the reason he picks the least is because if they are great, we would say, well, that's just their special gift or ability. No, he makes us great. He empowers us to be great. He strengthens us to be great. He gifts us to be great so that we might be in the likeness of his son every day in every way becoming more and more like Jesus until that last day when we will become exactly like him in life eternal, we will shine like stars because God's promised us. So while we're in this world, we are, em we are empowered to be his people, to be his love, to be his forgiveness, and, and not to forget where we've been. Moses, in our Old Testament lesson, was trying to help the people of God not forget they'd been 40 years in the desert. And except for Joshua and Caleb and Moses, those were three people we know of who had watched the waters part of the Red Sea, who had seen the miracle that God continued to perform, this miracle of his grace, this miracle of his love, who had, who had received for 40 years what people, it became very normal for them. 
manna in the morning. Once you go out, you go out, get your manna, you go make your manna pancakes, and then you, know, you have them with a little butter, a little this, a little that. We got quail in the nighttime. Every night we're plucking quail for 40 years and 40, you know, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years. Every day, every morning, that's all they knew. They'd forgotten the grace of God. They'd forgotten his power. Just like those of us who are a little bit older. Can we really express to the next generation things like what it means to dial a phone? Can they even imagine a moment when they couldn't go and nuke their lunch or dinner or get something instantly? like we can. Is there a, a way of explaining, we used to go to libraries, not download them onto our Kindles. Can we even express to them what life has been like before free Wi-Fi everywhere? Friends in Christ, in that same way, what happens with us is we lose our sense of the extraordinary. But God comes to us every week. God comes to us every moment, every day with the rising of the sun and its setting, with the message of the cross and the Christ, with the gifts of his sacraments and his word, with the power of the Holy Spirit in us. He comes to us to remind us we are picked special and we of all people have a grand purpose. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. And when you don't feel quite that way, when you're not feeling polished and shiny, that's when we hear those words of Jesus from today's gospel that gives us strength. He says, come unto me, you who are burdened and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we are feeling like we're not much or not adequate or lost or powerless, this is the time for us to press into the cross of Christ. Remember that we are chosen among all people special for him. And instead of us bearing our own burden, let our God and Father in heaven, through Jesus Christ, bear that burden. And we take on his yoke, which is easy and light. A yoke that says, you're loved, you're forgiven, you're mine. Predestined, set apart to be conformed to his likeness. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, help me each day to see the miracle, the miracle that you chose me. You picked me special and made me your child. In the blood of Jesus Christ, I am cleansed of my sin. In the waters of baptism, I made your child forever. And I can hardly wait to stand around the throne, that throne of grace, and experience what it means to be fully in the likeness of you. As I live right now, every day of my life, help me to catch that glimmer the glimmer of your spirit in me. Remind me it's by your power that I live and in your power that I serve. And remind me you never made an entourage. I can't just be a follower, a hanger on. You made me special to do your purpose, to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, would you rise, please?
and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Now go share that blessing with somebody else today.